Thank you, Mitchell, and thank you, everybody, for coming out today. It's yeah. been an absolute pleasure to meet so many people along the way that I've only seen behind a, t a computer screen for the past three years. <laughs> we do a lot of Zooms on Stand for the And you guys, New Brunswick folks, you guys are just awesome. You guys do so much. You guys are so mobilized. You're so connected, working together to create change. And that is the whole basis of Stand for the E. Nobody's going to come and save us. We got to do that work. And we are doing that work. So give yourselves a big hand, guys, for all the work that you do. Sorry. So, as, uh, as Mitchell mentioned, we've been traveling across Canada on the Trudeau for Treason Trail. We have now made, I think, 25 stops in 25 different cities across Canada. We left May 1st, and I think today, today is around day 48, with two, two days break at home. That we've been on the road in that motorhome over there, driving across our beautiful country and meeting so many amazing people along the way. And I am just astounded at how awesome our country is and the people that live here. Awesome. And I gotta give a big shout out to Christina for being my pilot and getting us here safely. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> so guys, we got a bit of a problem here in Canada. And it's called treason. I think we all know that there's some problems in the house. And you might be asking, well, why are you guys at City Hall? Because we got a problem in City Hall, too, and we're going to talk about oh, that. Oh, and it's also called treason. So who here knows about the fraudulent five sitting in the House of Commons that are stirring shit with treason? I'll tell you who they are. Actually, Christina, do you want to tell us? The fraudulent five? Trudeau, Mendicino, Blair, Lametti, and Christy Freeland. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so this is the fraudulent five sitting up in the House of Commons who are supposed to be acting on behalf of Canadians, and they are not. Christy Freeland sits on the board of directors for the World Economic Forum. Bill Blair is in the World Economic Forum. Lametti is in the World Economic Forum. Trudeau is in the World Economic Forum. And we know from Mr. Klaus Schwab himself that the entire cabinet has been infiltrated with either current WEF members or former global young leaders. There's a question I've been asking everybody on the trail, and that is this. Did anybody here vote for the World Economic Forum? No! Did anybody here vote for the United Nations? No! Neither did I. So we're going to go into the Wayback Machine, and we're going to go back to January 29th, 2022. And who knows what January 29th, 2022 was? The Tracker Convoy! Thank you! You win a prize. <laughs> the Trucker Convoy, guys. So people, truckers, and good-hearted, God-loving Canadians from all across this country said, you know what? I've had enough of this shit. I've had enough of being told that I cannot leave my country unless I take some kind of medical treatment, experiment, whatever you want to call it, don't care. And I don't care if it's the most benign, safest thing in the world. At the end of the day, we all scream body autonomy for some certain things, but when it came to this, it was suddenly sit down, shut up and take it, or you can't go to a restaurant, or you can't go to a theater, or you can't go see grandma, you can't get the medical attention that you need, and you can't leave the country? How does that make sense? Isn't the Quarantine Act supposed to prevent the introduction or the spread of a communicable disease? How does my leaving the country prevent that? How does me not leaving the country prevent that is what I should say. You think they'd be like, hey, good riddance, we'll see you later. And who were they punishing the most? The people that bring us food, lumber, clothing, you name it, the truckers. And there they were telling them, you cannot leave the country unless you do all of these things. And these things have big consequences. And so they came together and said, no, no. 
And they allowed her elderly to die alone. And they most certainly did allow elderly to die alone and women to have babies alone without their loving partner by their side. Shameful. And we know how awesome and amazing that convoy was. Those of us that were there, we saw the truth and we know the truth. And we are not racist, misogynist, country hating, whatever they wanted to call us. We love our country and that's why we were there. And we love each other and that's why we were there. Yeah. yeah. And for everything that those men and women sacrificed, let's give them a big thank you for that. Little old Canada became the poster child of how to rise up against a tyrannical government. Yeah! And what did they do? They lit the fire in bellies all over the world. Woo! Even Bolivia had a convoy in honor of Canada. So yay us. Yeah! Woo! So let's get into the shitstorm that happened. <laughs> So on February 14th, the Liberals decided to declare the Emergencies Act. And now the thing is, is that we know that the, that the protest was peaceful and lawful because we had two injunctions in Ottawa where the judge stated, as long as the protest remains peaceful and lawful, carry on good people. And two days later, all of a sudden, the, the Liberals are dropping the hammer and declaring the Emergencies Act for the first time since it was created in 1985. And here are some fun facts. We know now, through the Public Order Emergency Commission and the Special Joint Committee on the Declaration, and Brenda Lucky herself, does everyone know who Brenda Lucky is? The now former commissioner of the RCMP. Well, that's unfortunate timing, but what can we do? <laughs> The now former RCMP commissioner, who is most likely getting full pension for her awesome job, she admitted that the police had not exhausted all available tools. If they have not exhausted all available tools, then they're not to invoke the act. Full stop. Let's continue. We also know that the RCMP, the OPP, the local police, Nobody asked for that act to be declared. Nobody. So who did? Well, remains to be seen. Yes, we also know that there was no vote through the governor and council as is required in section 17 bracket 1 of the Emergencies Act. And instead, the liberal executive branch, a, a limited number of the liberal executive branch, decided that they were going to declare the Emergencies Act. No, it doesn't work like that, guys. It doesn't work like that. And finally, paragraph three in the preamble of the Emergencies Act, and I want everyone to understand that a preamble sets the tone for a piece of legislation. It sets the foundation for a piece of legislation. And in paragraph three of that act, it states that our rights are not to be infringed even in a time of a national emergency, and it states under the Canadian Bill of Rights. And it seems to me that everybody in this country has forgotten about the Bill of Rights, which is an act in recognition of our human rights and fundamental freedoms, i.e., unlike the Charter, it is not the government giving us our rights, it's acknowledging the rights that we're born with, our God-given inalienable rights that only God gives us. Yeah. And the only person, these air quotes for person, that can take my rights from me is God, yeah. not the government. to section 46 bracket 2 of the Criminal Code of Canada, which states, everyone commits treason who in Canada uses force or violence for the purpose of overthrowing the government of Canada or a province. Well, use of force, guys, is legislation, it's law. So when they create law with prohibitions and sanctions as they did in the regulations under the Emergencies Act, that is use of force. And we saw the violence on February 18th when those unnamed, unmarked 
police officer arrived in their buses, planes, and whatever else they chose to arrive in. What did they do, guys? Were they, were they there to serve and protect us? No. That's not at all what they did. And instead, they hurt people, they stepped on people, they broke their arms, their limbs. They hijacked them, stole them, drove them into the middle of nowhere and dropped them off on the side of the road in freezing temperatures. They stole their trucks, smashed their trucks. Do you guys know that they left those truck windows down with the, the truck running? So that when the guys got out of jail, they couldn't take the trucks home? Yeah, they did that. And that was a whole illegal. It was illegal and we are here today because we're not gonna take this shit. Yeah. Because if I break the law, I do the time. Right. Right? And we need to hold them accountable. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I wanna state, guys, we cannot vote our way out of this. We cannot just say, oh, we're gonna elect the, the conservative party yeah. or the NDP. First of all, two wings of the same bird. Let's acknowledge that. And number two, if we don't deal with this criminal act, that it's going to happen again because it lays the framework for every other politician behind him to do the same. Yep. And it's up to us to take action to hold them accountable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who here has been following CSIS and the Chinese interference? Can I get a hand up? Okay. So we know, I guess we all know about CSIS and the Chinese electoral interference. Did you know there's a special, uh, special joint committee reviewing that information now? And CSIS did an interview, or he did a uh, testimony, I guess you, you could say. His name is David Jano Katsuya. And he used to be an agent for Asia Pacific. And he sat in front of those MPs and said, we got a problem. We got a big problem. There is Chinese interference in, in our elections and the triads are part of it. Who knows who the triads are? The world's biggest Asian gang was colluding with our government regarding the Chinese electoral interference. And he said, you know what we gotta do here? We gotta, we gotta put some parameters on this and we need to jail people that collude with foreign entities. Yes, we do, because it's called treason. Yeah. Sidewinder, guys, who knows Project Sidewinders? I know I ask a lot of questions, don't I? <laughs> who knows Project Sidewinder? Okay, Project Sidewinder was a joint RCMP and CSIS operation that started in 1995. 1995, guys. In 2001, the government killed it and all the evidence was destroyed. Flash forward to 2023 and we're still, we are still talking about the same problem. Same issue. So we got work to do there. And I got something fun and exciting for you guys. Do you guys know that the senators under the Constitution Act 1867, the, the senators were, that they signed an oath to the, to the king? And in that oath, part of that Constitution, it says that if they're colluding with foreign entities, they must resign. And they've been doing that for three and a half years. So we gotta hold them accountable too. Because we may not elect them, but that Constitution says, Goodbye, get out of here because you're colluding with foreign entities. Yeah. So, it brings us to our last treasonous action of not just the Liberal governments in the House of Commons, but also the provincial governments and the people in that city hall right there. And guys, let's go back to the World Economic Forum and the United Nations, and I bet you're all going to put your hands up when I say, who here knows about a 15-minute city? Fantastic, amazing. And this is why we're at City Halls. Because this is really easy work, guys. Because under the Constitution Act, anything that is a matter of civil liberties doesn't sit in that building. And what they're doing is illegal. It is illegal. Now I got a question for you. Was your mayor recently elected? Is it a new mayor? Yeah. No. Yeah. I no. hear a yes and no. No. Don Ar Don Arno. So he's not new? No, she. She, she sorry. No. Yeah. Okay, so she's re-elected. Yeah. It's been interesting because I ask this question everywhere we go, and a lot of places they're new. And there's a lot of new union heads, and trustees, and principals, and all of these people just magically showing up out of nowhere. And I got another fun fact for you. A mayor 
is considered a peace officer under the Criminal Code of Canada. And what does that mean, guys? Bill of Rights. They are required and they must adhere to the Canadian Bill of Rights because they are considered peace officers under the Criminal Code of Canada. So let's hold them accountable. And I don't want to hear anyone say, well, they're, they're good people, they're our friend. No, they're not. <laughs> and I don't want to hear, well, they didn't know. Yes, they did. Because guess who's responsible for the meetings and the agendas and the chairing of those meetings and agendas? The mayors. So th for them to say, oh, I got outvoted, why was it even on the agenda? Because you know it's violating our rights. And let's dig into what's happening here. By the way, let's also acknowledge that most of these decisions were made during the lockdown when the buildings were closed and we weren't invited, meaning no meaningful consultation with these people. I got another question for you. Who here knows about C40.org? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to read some stuff for you guys. This is the executive summary from C40.org. C40.org is the mayoral, the global mayoral uh, initiative under the World Economic Forum that rolls into the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals Agenda 2030. And it goes like this. The changes, oh, and I also want to be clear, guys. The vernacular that they're using inside City Hall is not 15-minute cities. It's called the strategic plan. And in that strategic plan, you will find things like net zero, pedestrian friendly or pedestrian forward and of course sustainability and all of these magic keywords that are really just part of the United Nations sustainable goals and we know that don't we because we're not stupid we're smart people yeah. yeah so you guys ready for this listen to this this is the changes that need to happen to get us there it doesn't really say what there is but we'll carry on <laughs> this is a consumption table. It's on page 20 of the executive summary, and it goes like this. These are their goals for 2050, so listen up, folks. You ready? <clears throat> Reduce clothing consumption by 66%. Reduce food, diet, by 60%. They're going to start telling you what you can eat and what you can't eat. Reduce air travel by 55% and reduce vehicle ownership by 39%. That's what they're planning inside this, these walls without you even knowing it. These are serious rights infringements. You're going to tell us where we can go, where we can't go, what we can eat and what we can't eat? Is that what you think? Hey, I got another. This might be my last question. Does anyone own your body? No. no. Does anyone get to tell you what to eat? No. Where to go? No. What car you can drive? No. If you can go to Mexico on a vacation or not? No. Hell no. Hell freaking no. So we got to start holding these people accountable. Now there's a woman here, and I'm not sure where she's gone. Wants to talk? Is it yourself? The 15 minute city? No, that's me. There's two of you. Why don't you guys both come up? Because you want to, okay, you can go, well, let's have you go first because you're going to read some information that you have that I think that people need to understand and why this, so first of all, the vernacular is one part where they're using different terminology to trick, trip us up so that it makes it a challenge to have that conversation and I'm telling you right now, if you look up any city in Canada and you put in strategic plan, you will find this. Now she's going to talk about the other piece that makes it difficult to put it all together.